before I released a video showing the prototype for Toy Story 3D, I asked you in the comments whether a second video talking about how I programmed the effect would be something that you'd like to see. Judging by your response, it is. So here's my attempt at explaining the techniques used to achieve 3D on a 16-bit console. If we run the prototype build and deliberately crash through the wall, you can see more clearly how the polygon is made up of many vertical textured strips. So if we take a flat texture and split it into individual vertical strips, we can then remove every other strip and squash the remaining strips together. Then we can shrink each of the heights of the individual strips and we end up with an approximation of a 3D wall. Now the game takes perspective into account when deciding which strips to draw or not, but the basic concept is the same. So we've discovered that you can draw a single wall using just vertical textured strips. But what about a whole room full of walls and doors and columns? Well, if you look at any given screen in this 3D section of Toy Story, you can see that it's made up of just a set number of vertical textured strips. In the case of Toy Story, the screen resolution is 256 pixels across. So that would be 256 strips. And that's both the most and the least you'd ever have to draw. No matter how complex the scene, there are always just 256 strips to draw. Wolfenstein uses the same trick, in fact I think it was the first game to use it. Working out exactly which 256 strips to draw to make up the final screen isn't too tricky. Okay, maybe it's a little complex, but it doesn't take a great amount of CPU. Rendering the screen full of strips is the processor-intensive task, so the big question is, how fast can you draw a vertical textured strip? To answer that, we first need to figure out how to draw texture map strips of different lengths. If we start with an original texture and copy each pixel straight to the screen, we get a strip that is 100% the height of the screen, assuming the screen height and texture height are identical. If we skip every other pixel of the texture when we copy, we get a strip that is 50% the height of the screen. And if we skip every third pixel, 75% the height of the screen. Deciding how often to skip texture pixels dictates how scaled our final strip is. So let's look at some 68,000 code to see just how this is programmed. For simplicity, we're assuming both the screen and the texture are just one pixel wide, but the code would be very similar for any sizes. So we've pointed the register A0 at the screen and A1 at the texture. The register D1 tells us how many pixels to draw. So first we move the pixel from A1 to A0, which copies from the texture to the screen. We then add one to get to the next pixel down the screen and add one to get to the next pixel from the texture, and then branch back to do it again 128 times total. So this code draws a 100% scaled textured strip to the screen. But all we're interested in is speed, so let's have a look at how long this code would take to run. Each instruction takes a set number of cycles to execute. So each loop takes 38 cycles, and we do it 128 times, so the total time to execute this strip is 4,864 cycles. But, you may ask, what are cycles, and how many do we have to play with? Well, the Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive, has a clock speed of 7.68 MHz, which means it has 7.68 million cycles a second with which to execute instructions. At 60 frames a second, you'd get 128,000 cycles a frame. One of our strips takes 4,864 cycles to draw, and we need to draw 256 of them to render a full screen, which would take a total of 1,245,184 cycles, giving us a very disappointing frame rate of just 6.2 frames a second. But we can do better. Let's throw up a HUD to keep track of our current frame rate and cycles as we optimize our approach. Firstly, our code draws all our strips at 100% height, but if you look at this screen, you can see that lots of the space is empty, as the strips are all different lengths. So we can write this code, which fills the first quarter of the screen with space, the next half with 50% scale texture, and the bottom quarter with space again. When we look at the cycles, we can see that filling the screen with space is quicker than filling it with a texture. So when we do all the maths, we see that it would take 4096 cycles, which is quicker. So let's see how that affects the frame rate. Good, an improvement, but not nearly enough. Time for more tricks. I'm sure you've already noticed, but if not, a huge time saving is that the screen is in fact mirrored. This means that we only have to do half the strip, and so it doubles the frame rate. Next, if we look really closely at the screen, we can see that each strip contains two pixels side by side. This is because the Genesis stores two 16 color pixels in one byte of memory. This means the screen is really only 128 strips wide, so we double the frame rate again. Now we're getting somewhere. What we do next seems crazy. Instead of looping our code for each strip, 
we could write out one instruction per pixel at a time. So if the strip is 64 pixels high, we would write specific code for just that strip containing 64 instructions, one for each pixel. It would draw space where needed and texture where needed and pick all the correct texture pixels for the intended scale on screen. And because it wouldn't need to loop, we save all the cycles used to process the loop. Let's look at the example timings. So the original code would take 2048 cycles, but is only nine lines long. The new code to do the same thing is nearly 64 lines long, but only takes 1024 cycles. But we would need bespoke code for every single length of line possible. And remember that you can go closer to walls than it just filling the screen. So we would need to cover scaling the texture up past 100% to all as well. So that's getting on for nearly 10,000 lines of bespoke code and cartridge space is at a premium. But it turns out we could write a macro to generate all the code for us. And it ended up taking just 56K of cartridge. So that's what we did. And that gets us up to 58.4 frames a second. Now of course there's lots of other game logic and collision and sound and everything else to run too, which is why the game doesn't run that fast, but I hope this video has given you some insight into how we achieved this effect. And if you've made it this far, give yourselves a pat on the back. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video, and please let me know in the comments if you'd like more, or less, of this kind of thing.